Yes, Roma wines taste better because only Roma selects from the world's greatest wine reserves for your pleasure. And now, Roma Wines, R-O-M-A. Roma Wines present... Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Mr. Richard Conte in Win, Place, and Murder, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those better-tasting California wines enjoyed by more Americans than any other wine. For friendly entertaining, for delightful dining. Yes, right now a glass bowl would be very pleasant, as Roma Wines bring you Richard Conte in a remarkable tale of... Suspense! Most of this took place because you can lead a horse to water and sometimes you can make him drink. But you can never make him win a race. I learned that from a horse named Mosquito down at Tropical Park. I was in New York and things weren't easy. The private detective business had gone flatter than a glass of beer in a boiler room. I needed to borrow money, but the only place I could get it from was a, a girl named Laura Lee. I'd been going with her before I got hit by that monsoon at the $2 window. And I'd marry her if she could shake a father with five million bucks and a big stick. Anyway, I scratched together a little dough, and I'd sit in my office brooding about how crime doesn't pay. It didn't help any when Laura took an office across the hall and called herself a private detective. For five million bucks, you can afford to play games. But after that, things went from bad to worse. And then last week, Thursday, I noticed in the paper Mosquito was running at Jamaica. I picked up the phone to call a bookie joint run by a guy named Joey Gore. And that's how it started. Let me talk to Joey Galt. I got a bet. He can't talk now. It's only going to take a minute. Why you want him for... I told you, I want to make a bet. Just a minute. Hello. Joey, you know that horse mosquito? Hold it, mister. This ain't Joey Galt. Look, if I wanted to talk to everybody in town, I'd rent a subway. Let me talk to Galt. Uh, who is this? Chris Draper. I want to give Joey a bet. He's not taking any more bets. What do you mean? I got the right thing at Jamaica. What do you mean he's not taking any more bets? I mean it the way it sounds, Draper. Joey Galt isn't taking any more bets. I should have known then, but I'm the kind of a guy that finds out about an earthquake when the repair squad arrives. If Joey Galt wouldn't take my bets, somebody would. It was almost 12, so I put on my coat and started for a bookie joint down on 45th. On the door, I hung a sign that said, Out to lunch, back at 1 o'clock. I always hated to walk out that door because I had to look at a sign across the hall. Laura Lee, licensed private detective. <laughs> a dame that couldn't find a spoon of sugar in a candy factory. But she had the scratch, and that's what counts. I walked down to 45th Street and put my last hundred bucks on Mosquito to win. It was raining, so I ducked into a drugstore for a sandwich and a cup of coffee. After that, I strolled up toward my place again. I stopped a couple of times, once in front of a bookstore. The window was full of books on how we had to have a peaceful world. Three of them were written by generals who wouldn't know peace if somebody lugged it in on a hunk of toast. It was about a quarter to one when I walked up to the door of my office. Somebody had made some changes, and I got the fastest slow burn in history. My sign was gone, but there was another one that said, Gone for one week. Please inquire at room 205, Miss Laura Lee. I burst into my office and called the intercepting switchboard. Come on, come on. Yes, yes, yes. What's the matter? Don't you answer these things? Uh, well, I only have two hands, Mr. Draper. I'll bet you got two heads to go with them. Look, nobody's calling his phone for a week. Haven't I been getting any calls? Of course, Mr. Draper. You had quite a few, but we switched them to Miss Lee's office. Why? According to your instructions. I see. When did I give them? Oh, well, Miss Lee told her. She said you were working together from now on. Uh, when did she say that? Oh, about a week ago when she brought up the check to pay your office rent. My rent? Yeah. Anything wrong, Mr. Draper? Not a thing, baby. Get a pad of paper. I've got a message for you. I'm out, Draper. Just a minute. All right. Where's Pilson? I, I held onto the phone and looked up from the desk. The room was full of muscle. A guy named Mike Farago, a collection boy for Joey Gault. I'd seen him around before. A broad guy with a smile like an undertaker. Where's Pilson? Oh, uh, hello. I just called your office. What happened over there? Look, don't make me keep repeating. Where's Pilson? 
I don't know any Pilsen. You don't sound sure. I'm awful sure, Farago. I don't know any Pilsen. You're a nice guy, Draper. You shouldn't have made it tough. Now, wait a minute. Put that away. It'll go off in my face. That's so you can see it. Now, look. You're trying to find a guy named Pilsen. I don't know him. I never heard of him. As far as I'm concerned, you just dreamed him up. The boss don't think that. Huh? Yeah, Pilsen just knocked off the boss. He killed Joey Gold? Uh-huh, that's right. He just walked in, took a gun out of his umbrella, and shot Joe right in the ticker. It's a shame. Well, I'm sorry for Joe. Well, I hope they let him make book up there. Everybody's got regrets. We got him about you, Draper. I don't know your boy, Farago. You had your trance, Draper. Now... Hello, Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Put down that phone. I got him on the wire, Mike. You should ask him. Hello, Lieutenant. I got one of Gord's boys right. up here. All right, all right. He's pushing me around a little. If he pushes too hard, you know where to look. All right, you win this one, Draper. I'll be back when you're not so lucky. I'm always lucky. I don't believe it. I've seen your mutual tickets. I'll be back. Goodbye. 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 As soon as he walked out, I started hating her again. Laura Lee, girl detective. I knew now where the business was going. For weeks, she'd been bypassing me on every client. I wanted to shoot her in the head. But I controlled myself and started across the hall to strangle her. Look, Laura, I want to talk to you. Watch out, Chris. He's got a gun. Huh? Watch out, will you? Oh, heavens to... Be... Oh. You all right, Chris? Who is he? A client. One of mine? Oh, please, Chris, I didn't mean anything with those signs. I just wanted to show you. Chris, if you'd marry me, things like this wouldn't happen. Will you marry me? On my dough, who is he? Who? This on the floor. He's not a carpet. Who is he? I, I don't know. He gave me this ticket. Let me see it. Yeah, check stand, Grand Central Station. But don't tell me... He wanted you to pick up a suitcase. How could you know that? Look, I spent my life in this jungle. I know a phony pitch when I see it. Oh, it's not a phony. He's a nice old man. All right, he's a nice old man. If you don't mind being shot. Well, he offered me $100 to pick up the suitcase. Look, for four bits, any red cap in town will do it. The guy's a phony. Somebody was watching for the bag, you see. He couldn't use a red cap. I was going to pick it up and meet him at track 17 at 2 o'clock. Well, help me roll him over. You know, Christopher, he, he's really an important man. They don't wear ragged Real collars. Important. Talk tonight. There. Here's his wallet. Hey, you're right. He uh, is an important man. Let me see it. Let me see. Frank Pilson, age 47, cashier, Everwear Umbrella Company. Pilson, oh, yeah. Pilson, you've got yourself a tough client, baby. This guy's wanted for murder. Oh, he couldn't be. He shot up a bookie named Joey Gold. Oh, Christopher, there's some mistake. Joey doesn't think so. The police will find out. They'll understand. You'll have to make a bigger sale. All the hoods in town want him. Well, I just don't believe it, and I'm going to take the ticket and meet him with the suitcase. Now, give me that ticket. No, now, you stay away from me, Chris. Now... You're not big enough, sweetheart. No. Let loose. Uh, are you going to marry me, Chris? Not today. All right, Chris. I... Uh. Uh, I'm sorry, darling, but I'm a big girl now. <laughs> I don't know where she learned that trick, but by the time I got to the elevator, it was on its way down. When I got to the street, she was near up near 7th Avenue, climbing into a cab. There was one, only, only one other cab in sight, but I couldn't do business there because Farago moved into it and started to follow Laura. If I was going to get there, I had to grab a cab down the street. I turned and ran right into a lieutenant from Homicide named Herbie Knapp, a guy that learned how to dress from Brooks and how to talk from Damon Runyon. Ah, hello, Chris. How are the horses? Look, Herbie, I gotta run. I asked you how the horses was. Mosquito in the first now. Let me get by, Herbie. I gotta get a cab. Uh, oh, just a minute. It's a shame, but you gotta stay here. Likewise, it's a shame about Joey Galt. I don't have the time, Herbie. Somebody walks in about an hour ago and shoots him right on the price tag. Yeah, yeah, I heard about it. Yeah, you know, it's most uncharitable to kill a bookie, especially he is an honest bookie. Stay here. All right, I'm not going anywhere now. And all and sundry along Broadway say Joey Gold is honest as the day is long and part of the night, too. He never welches. This comes about probably because no one ever has a winner with Joey, though. If you got a pitch, make it, Herbie. I'm asking you the whereabouts of Pilsen. Who? A citizen named Pilsen. He drops one of your circulars in Gold's place. Well, that proves I got a printer's bill. It proves more. A few minutes after Joey dies, the phone rings and it's you, Chris. Pretending you want to place a bet. I have put two and two together, and I don't want four. I want Pilsen. All right, he's up in 205. You'll find him up there. We'll both find him, Chris. I gotta go, Herbie. You go on up. Being a cop is no fun. Likewise, it's lonely. You come, too. I could see Herbie wasn't going to let me chase that cab, so I got him up to room 205. I opened the door to Laura's office. 
He's in here now. Check him and let me get... Hey. He is a wee fella, Chris. He is so wee, I do not see him. And you know I couldn't see him either? And why I couldn't see him was that he wasn't there. Lieutenant Knapp of Homicide looked at me, and I looked at Lieutenant Knapp of Homicide. And at that moment, he looked better than I did. That was because I was gaining weight. In a couple of minutes, I expected to be heavier by 13 ounces, which is the standard weight of a pair of handcuffs. For suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you Richard Conti in Win, Place, and Murder. Roma Wines' presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Between the acts of suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. You receive an extra dividend without cost every time you buy Roma Wine. That extra dividend is the fuller bouquet, richer body, and better taste you enjoy in all Roma California wines. That extra dividend of better taste is the reason why more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. Yes, Roma wines taste better because Roma selects and presses California's choicest grapes. Then, with ancient skill and resources unmatched in America, Roma master vintners guide this grape treasure unhurriedly to tempting taste perfection. These choice wines are placed with mellow Roma wines of years before. And from these reserves, the world's greatest reserves of fine wines, Roma later selects for your pleasure. Whether your favorite is sherry, port, or muscatel, you'll find more real enjoyment with Roma. So buy Roma tomorrow. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wine, your best buy in good taste. And now, Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Richard Conti as Chris Draper, with Wally Mayer as Mike Farrago in Win, Place, and Murder, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. I felt embarrassed, to say the least. Here I have invited Lieutenant Knapp up to meet somebody who is of mutual interest to both of us. Now I had to pick up the check. Well? Well, he was here five minutes ago. Look, don't pull my leg on account of I will use it on your teeth. He was here five minutes ago. I hit him and I thought he was out. He must have gone down the fire escape. Oh, first you never hear of Pilsen, then you have him upstairs, and now he goes out the back way. Whose place is this? It's a girl's office, Miss Laura Lee, debutante detective. How come Pilsen was here? He came by mistake. Yeah, that's the way I'm taking you to the jug, Bob. I have a brother-in-law handles cases cheap. Look, would I hide him on you, Herbie? I'm taking you downtown, Chris. Now, wait a minute, Herbie. Unless you pull Pilsen out of the woodwork. All right. He's over in my office. It's better. Across the hall here. Did he go down the fire escape on this side, too? No, he's over here. In the closet. I had to lock him in. There. You can have all five feet of them. Well, I don't see no... In the back there. Well, let me see. Sure. Look them over good. Wait, wait a minute, Draper. Sorry, Herbie. Hey, hey, Chris, let me out of here. I told you I was in a hurry. I'll I'll shoot the bone out. And bring all the tenants in? The police force would look funny locked in the closet. I'll be back in an hour. Wait a minute. Oh, wait, wait a minute, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, Chris, uh, th- that Philly mosquito, she- she's running in the first. Like crazy is the word. Yeah, look, if you keep me in here an hour, I will not get a bet down, chum. Suppose she wins. She's a 58 to 1 shot, too. Uh, Chris, I will consider it a great favor if you put 20 skins on mosquito's nose. All right, I'll give it to Lou Golding. He works the corner. Pass it under the door. Uh, well, well, what if it sticks? If it's horse money, it's thin. Pass it under. Uh, all right. Uh, you got it? Yeah. Be sure she wins. I'll tell her about your 20 bucks. Thanks, Chris. I won't forget you for this. Go easy. She may lose. That's what I mean. It looked like a good trick, but I knew it wasn't. If I didn't find Pilsen, Herbie would come out of that closet burning like horseradish in a floor furnace. And that give and take about horses didn't mean a thing because he's the kind of a guy who could win the Grand National and put the kids to bed without supper. 
I had to get to track 17, and I had to head off Laura somewhere in between. I walked to the corner and got down Herbie's bed. And then I cut down 44th Street to Grand Central. The station was jammed with Scarsdale club women trying to look 36 for 46 hip. But I spotted Farago right away. We couldn't miss with his face. Most witch doctors would have turned it down. He was standing over by the telegraph window watching the check stand. Laura was there looking around nervously. And finally the guy behind the counter handed her a small black bag and she started for the Vanderbilt Avenue exit. Farago dropped the telegram blank and started after her. If he ever got to her, she'd be counting the bruises with a slide rule. So I cut across and bumped into Farago near the stairway. No, watch out where you... Oh. It's too late to get on now, Farago. Get out of my way. Oh, come around either way, mister. Okay, you ask for it. Oh, come on, come on. Now, break it up, break it up. Come on. If you want to fight, get a matchmaker. You're a cop. He was bothering a lady. Where is she? Well, she's gone now. What did she do, ride a deer? I just walked up. Were you bothering a lady? I don't know none. Oh, forget about it. Now, both of you get out of here. Yeah, okay, okay. I'll tag you later, Drew. And you get moving, too, fella. I'm sorry about this trouble. Here. Here, you want a cigar? Is it one of those nickel things? Yeah. Well, you keep it. I don't smoke nickel cigar. I didn't say you had to smoke it, officer. Just chew it. Farago was up the stairs and out the Vanderbilt exit. But I knew Laura had time to disappear in the crowd and Farago didn't know about gate 17. I went over toward the information desk and then walked back to the gate. I didn't see Laura at first. The crowd was starting to gather for the Chicago train. Laura was over on one side, scared, and hugging the wall so tight she could have hired out of the mural. <gasps> oh, Chris! Give me that bag. You get out of here, Christopher. Hand me the bag. No. I'm taking over from here. Go away, Chris. Now, if you don't go away, I'll scream. If you stick around, you'll be screaming out of a hole in your throat. I told I... you up in the office. Homicide wants your boy. Oh, my stars. He didn't kill anybody, Chris. I don't want you to make a mistake. Look, baby, I like your knees, but not on my neck. I got homicide breathing hard. Now, give me the bag. No, I'm not going to do it. Chris, hold no. it, hold no. it. Hold it. Officer, uh... Who are you saving this time, fella? Uh... Now, wait a minute, officer. You need a white horse. Is he bothering you, lady? Yes. I'm not bothering yes. her. I know her. She works across the hall. Well, sometimes that helps. Goodbye, fella. I never saw this man before on all my born days. Look, don't never get the wrong idea. Him. This is important. On your way, fella. Stop bothering the lady. It's important, I tell you. It's a matter of life and death. That's the first time I ever heard a guy put it that way. <laughs> cop watched me as I walked off, and the way he stood at the gate, I knew I wasn't going to get to Laura with a shortwave radio. It was 1.45, and Pilsen had a few more minutes before he had to show. I took a chance and called his office. It looked as if I wasn't going to get there, because the girl on the board had locked you. Hello. Ever wear umbrella? I want to talk to Mr. Pilsen. He's not here. He'll be back at two. Is he the cashier over there? Yes. Well, how long has he been there? Who is this, please? Uh, insurance company. We're just investigating a policy. Oh, yeah. Well, he's been here for 15 years. He was with the company at the start. Uh, how about his personal habits? I beg your pardon? His habits, the big two, women and gambling. I don't think so. Are you sure? I don't think he gambles. You have to take a vote on the women. He's over 40. That don't change anything but the blood pressure. He uh, gave a Mr. Galt as a reference. Do you know if he uh, ever calls up there? Why, yes, I think he does. It's a brokerage house, isn't it? It used to be. Uh, do you know if he went there today? I don't think so. He had to pick up the payroll during his lunch hour. What payroll? He always picks it up on Friday. I didn't know about that. Would it uh, be risky to insure him? Oh, my, no. He's been doing it for years. A small black bag. He does it every Friday. I see. How much is in the payroll? I don't know. Well, make a guess. Oh, 50000 I'm not sure. It may be. That's right. What? Maybe. I was out of the woods on that one anyway. Pilsen had taken the payroll to square up with Joey Gold. But why did Pilsen knock him off? And why did Joey Gord let a five and dime run up a tab like that? They were big questions. And the answer walked right by the telephone booth. I was just coming out of the booth when Pilsen hurried around the corner. 
All I had to do was reach out and yank no, no. it. Please. Come here, Pilson. Get in that booth. No, no. No, no you hurt me. Get in that booth. Come on. Don't, please. Now sit in there and talk in a hurry. Uh, don't hurt me, Missy. You can have the rest of the money. What money? The other 26000 The payroll dough. No, I didn't want to take it, but he made me take it. Your friend made you take it. Well, I don't uh, have any. Farrago, he made me take it. Well, he's on another team. I'm Chris Draper. Uh, you Mr. Draper, but Miss Laura Lee said... Yeah, that... I know, I know. She said she was handling my cases. Why did you want a detective? Uh, I was in trouble. I thought you could help me. I, I... can't square a murder rap. I... I just took the money. There's no murder. Golf's cold enough to prove it. Golf? And you're wanted for murder. You've got to help me, Mr. Draper. You're tough enough by yourself. No, no, no. Mr. Gold was all right when I left. He and Farrago were talking. Farrago, huh? He's the one who fixed it up so I could go to Chicago. Why? He said I'd get into trouble unless I skipped. He, he said to take what was left of the payroll and skip. He said I had to do it. Or throw a lot of sevens before two o'clock. No, no, but I got scared. When Farrago came down the stairs, he gave me the gun and he said to take care of myself. But I got scared and that, that's why I went to see you. He didn't like me. You're guessing. No, he wanted that money. I know. He kept asking where it was. I didn't tell him. Then I got away from him and I came to see you. You've got to help me, Mr. Draper. On that much story? Oh, please, Mr. Draper. I didn't kill him. I, I wouldn't do that. You can ask anyone. Can I ask Joey Galt? <laughs> I rushed Pilsen up to my office. Herbie was banging around hey, the closet like a mountain apprentice. Hey, let me out of here. Hey, let me out Hey, hey, all right, all place? right, all right. Chris, let me out of here. Come on out, Herbie. How was it? Ah, humiliating. By the same token, it is distressing. Yeah. Likewise, it is distressing to throw you in the clink. You don't have to. Here's your boy, Pilsen. He goes to the clink, too. Oh, tell him no, Mr. Draper. Tell him no. Ah, the drag Draper's got won't pull a flea over a silk thread. You go to the clink, Pilsen. He says he didn't do it. Christopher. Mr. Pilsen. Christopher, I want to talk to you. Now, wait a minute, Laura. What are you doing with Mr. Pilsen? Chris, I want to know what you are doing. Draper, Draper, who is this Judy with a tooth loose tonsil? Now, wait a minute. Calm down, Laura. Give me that bag. No, I'm not going to do... No. Give me that bag. No. Herbie, do me a favor. Oh. Uh, this afternoon, I would not do Bush a favor. Look, do me a favor and get in that closet with Pilsen. Oh, you miscounted the holes in my head. Look, it, it, it'll only be for a while. Please, Herbie, do me a favor. You can't lose anything now. That's it. Just stay in that closet. Chris, I got the only sunstroke in April. That's a boy. All right, now. Get in there, Pilsen. Mm, when yes, do sir. I get out? I'll let you know. Christopher, I won't let you do that to Mr. Now, Pilsen. Keep now, keep still and come I... over here by the desk. I'm not... Help me get this bag off. Oh, yes. There. Now we'll have a look. Well, I... Chris, in the bag. Yeah, Pilsen's laundry. 26,000 green shirts. Here, help me put them on the table. Uh, how do you know there's 26,000? Just put the dough on the table. Well, I'm trying. Don't bother to count it. I'll have more time. Oh, hello, Farrago. I was afraid you'd follow her. Just uh, scoop it in the bag, Draper. Well, you don't need this. You got the rest of Pilsen's payroll. <laughs> I'm just greedy. Put it in the bag. Pilsen doesn't get much out of this. He gets a lesson. Well, he was right then. You were after that dough. You knocked off Galt and took the dough Pilsen paid him. And I want the rest of that payroll. Chris, I was right. Mr. Pilsen didn't do it. That's right. Farago palmed off the murder gun on him. Oh, well, I won't let him take the money. Give me that bag. Wait a minute, I'm lady. Here. All right, lady. Get down on the floor and pick it up. And while you're down there, say a prayer for me, too. Scattered all over the prayers. What, what, what do you mean? Well, he's hot now. His only chance is to knock us off. That's right. Now hand me the bag. Thanks. It's the only way, Farago, but it's a big mistake. As I was saying to Lieutenant Knapp... I'll worry about that, Draper. I'm sorry about you, lady. I got regrets, but I'll get over them. Now use your head, Farago. If Herbie were here... Sorry. Pick an angel, Draper. Farago, I don't want to fast talk you, but, but there's a copper in that closet. Don't kid me. If he'll step out of there, he'll put you away for good. I wasn't born yesterday. But you'll die today, mister. <laughs> Draper. Draper, you're a, you're a bum horse player. But, but you hit it on the nose. This time. <sighs> he looks pretty, Herbie. Yeah. Yeah, all such characters get sleepy along about this time. If you roll them, you'll find the 20 grand he killed Galt for. Yeah. I 
guess that answers everything. Yeah. Yeah, except one thing. What? How a mosquito makes out in the first race. Oh, I forgot all about it. Give me that phone. Switchboard. Get me Lou Golding's place. She's due this time. I know it, Herbie. Uh, in such cases, I say heaven bless her. Hello, how about the first of Jamaica? How'd they finish? She won, Herbie. She came in and paid 58 yeah. to 1. How do you like that? How do you like that 50, for a horse? 58 to 1? $20 yeah. on the schnoz I got. That. Think of it, Laura. A hundred skins Half at 58, 58 to 1. Oh, my stars. It's $5,000. It's more than that. It's enough to get married on. You've got to do it now, Chris. You've just got to marry me now. Well, okay. I accept. Oh, Chris, darling. Isn't Come here, baby. Hey, what do you think of her, Herbie? Isn't she a knockout? Yeah, oh, to be sure, yeah. Isn't yeah. she the most beautiful thing you ever saw? In my born days. Of course she is. I tell you, Herbie, there'll never be another yeah. filly like mosquito. Oh, Christopher, darling. But there's always a kicker along Broadway. That price of 58 to 1 was too big. Lou Golding couldn't stand the belt. When Herbie and I went around to collect, they said he'd skip town. Now I'm broke. And Laura, top-heavy with dough, won't let me out of that marriage deal. She even claims Herbie for a witness. I could get a smart lawyer and wriggle out. But I got a sure thing at Hialeah next Tuesday. So I need a hundred bucks. Laura says she'll give it to me if I marry her. I don't know. It may be worth it. This is a sure thing. A very sure thing. Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A. Roma. America's favorite wine. This is Truman Bradley bringing back for a curtain call our suspense star of the evening, Richard Conte. Richard, most of our listeners know you as an outstanding young actor. Uh, we'd like to tell them something about you that they may not know. For example, the fact that you're an artist off the screen as well as on. <laughs> I'm no Michelangelo, Truman. Painting is just a hobby with me. Like having friends over for dinner and then talking about acting all night. <laughs> well, Richard, here's something to make your talking sessions even more friendly and companionable. A gift hamper of Roma wines with the compliments of Roma, the greatest name in wine. Thank you, Truman. That's an idea for holding my listeners. You're right, Richard. At dessert time or after dinner, serve that fine Roma California port and you'll really have an appreciative audience, believe me. For ruby red Roma port has a rich, full body, a mellow, natural sweetness that everyone enjoys. You'll find Roma port is the ideal finishing touch to a fine dinner a luxurious taste treat later in the evening with cake or fruit. Say no more, Truman. Just give me the Roma basket. Uh, one more word, Richard, and it's important, too. Remember that in all Roma wines, you enjoy an important difference. An extra premium goodness in fuller bouquet, richer body, and better taste. Yes, Roma wines taste better because only Roma selects for better taste from the world's greatest reserves of fine wines. That's why more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. You've counted with Conti, Truman. Thank you and good night. Next week, part of the country goes on daylight saving time. If your city remains on standard time, suspense will be heard one hour earlier. Check your local newspaper for time. Richard Conti appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of the late George Apley. Tonight's suspense play was from the story by Emil C. Tepperman. Next Thursday, you will hear Miss Ava Gardner as star of Suspense. Produced and directed by William Spear for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California. In the coming weeks, Suspense will present such stars as Robert Mitchum, David Niven, Virginia Bruce, and others. Make it a point to listen each Thursday to Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills.
Stay tuned for the thrilling adventures of the FBI in peace and war, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.